Um, if you're really buying like a lot of real estate and it's just so cash flow positive and that's how people retire early. Um, but yeah, there's not really a lot of passive income out there that's truly passive. Yeah, unless you've got enough to just like buy assets that produce positive cash flow all the time. So, But if it's like true passive income, there's a lot of people out there that are just like preaching to like regular everyday people who are making like five grand a month that they should be making passive income. You should not be making passive income. You need to be like building your skill set to the point where your regular expenses are covered and you are at the point where you're happy with how much you're making and you have leftover profit every single month and you've already done things to mitigate your tax liability. And at that point, this extra income goes into an asset which then can earn you passive income. A lot of times you need at least like 50 grand to put into real estate or into some kind of account, um, whether you're trading stocks or whatever, where it can literally make you passive income. But on the same token, if that cash isn't consistently replenishing itself, I wouldn't put it into that because it's like maybe gonna make a grand or two a month. Like if you do everything right, you just have to like continue building and growing until you consistently have 100,000 or 50 or 20 or how much ever um, that you want every month just coming in and it's extra and you have no use for it. And then you put it somewhere and it becomes passive. So like this whole passive income thing, it's just crack to people. Like they, they love it and they just want to hear that all day long. But like passive income is just not reality for 99% of people. And literally, because the 1%, like not even all the 1%, like I don't have that much passive income. Like to an extent, because we have a team, but like true passive income, like I'm working on it, I'm getting there, but I do not make passive income. Troy, when, uh... At what point, uh, whether that be like when you're making like 30K a month or like 100K a month, when did you at least start the, when you felt like it was the right time to at least start thinking about that stuff? Well, it's just literally like the excess. Yeah. Like it depends what you think you need. Mm -hmm. And if it's excess and it's just sitting in an account somewhere, losing value, then you have to start really thinking about that. And even then, at that point, I'd probably um, hire a tax strategist first. I mean, you kind of already have one, but um, just talking to them about like advanced things you can do, so make sure that money doesn't evaporate to the government. Um, and then start thinking about like, okay, you know, it's tough right now, but like, is there an Airbnb somewhere for three, 400 grand that's like kind of nice that somebody else can manage for me? Um, and it has its own advantages. Or can I max out like a SEP account? But still, even then, it's like that's not going to have huge returns. It's just mainly a tax thing. But um, and it's also nice too, like when you can take money out of an account, so you can't see how much you have, and it like goes into other things. Because I've heard Taylor Welch talk about this. He's like, yeah, if I have millions of dollars sitting in a bank account, my mind goes to Lambo. So I take it and I go put it into something else, whether it's an account that I plan on spending out of, or maybe it's an investment, and I just put it into there so I can't see the Lambo anymore financially.